active listening is super important for call center agents because it clarifies confusions, it resolves conflicts, and most importantly, it helps you build rapport, which improves your chances of getting high survey scores and a performance bonus. Let me ask you a question. If you can speak and understand a language, does that mean that you're automatically capable of active listening? Yes or no? Unfortunately, no. And that's because active listening is not only about the verbal communication or learning the language, it's also about understanding the nonverbal communication. Nonverbal communication, according to Wikipedia, is the transmission of messages or signals through a nonverbal platform such as eye contact, facial expressions, gestures, posture, body language. But let's not talk about these things today because all these things right here, they are relevant in face-to-face -face job interviews, face-to-face -face interactions. But today I'm only going to talk about phone conversations with your customers. So we're going to talk about this in a separate video, but today we're going to focus on the set of nonverbal cues that is relevant in phone conversations, and that is called the paralanguage. Now, what the heck is paralanguage? Paralanguage means the nonverbal elements of speech used to modify meaning and convey emotion. It includes pace, pitch, volume, and intonation. In short, you need to pay attention to your customer's tone of voice. And no, I'm not just talking about the words that she's saying, but how she's saying them. That is paralanguage. Examples of paralanguage are gasping, <gasps> laughing, <laughs> crying, <laughs> clearing of throat. <clears throat> paralanguage is also happening every time you emphasize certain words. For example, there's a sale tomorrow versus there's a sale tomorrow. So here, Sale is the emphasized word and here is tomorrow. So here it sounds like you're excited about the sale because you're emphasizing the word sale. But here it sounds like there's a sale tomorrow. Why are you shopping now? The same words, but the meaning changes because of the different word emphasis. That right there is a pair language happening. Now, Let's talk about the nonverbal cues that you usually hear in phone conversations when talking to your customers. Let's start with sighing. Now, I want you to listen to this mock call and try to guess what the customer is feeling. Why do you need my account number? I already gave you my name. For security purposes, every time we're about to disclose information about our customers, we need to confirm that the caller is the owner of the account. <sighs> Fine. 73848970C. sigh usually means that your customer is tired or frustrated or impatient or annoyed. And in this particular mock call, the customer is impatient and annoyed. And now, by understanding these nonverbal cues, you would already know how to proceed. So by knowing that your customer is impatient and annoyed, you would try to speed it up. You would try to use as less words as possible, and you would try to avoid small talk unless she initiates it. And this, my friend, is how active listening helps you. Now, second example. May I ask you to check if the USB is properly connected to your laptop? I can't. I don't know anything about this. I need a technician. I can't. I don't know anything about this. I need a technician. As you heard, Two different customers who said the exact same thing. But there's a huge difference because the first one was shouting and the second one was hesitant. Based on what you just heard, to whom would you send the technician first? To the shouting customer or to the hesitant one? Who do you think has no more patience left to spare? Just ignore the company policy for now. Ignore the requirements for dispatching a technician. Just base your answer on the nonverbal communication of these two customers. Who do you think 
would you send the technician to sooner? And I think you would all agree that you would send the technician sooner to the shouting customer. And that's because it's easier to reason with the hesitant customer. You can still assure her that you're gonna help her, but with the angry customer, good luck with that. Now, let's talk about the non-lexical conversational sounds. Another fancy word, what the heck does this mean? Basically, for the lack of a better term, these are words in English that are gibberish. They don't have particular meaning in a way that a, a regular English, English word would have, but when they're used in conversations, they, they're usually used to convey emotion, to signal recognition or signal comprehension. For example, when you want to non-verbally tell your customer that you're listening without saying, I'm listening, you would usually say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is the equivalent of nodding. But since you're talking over the phone, then you instead say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This tells your customer non-verbally to go on, I'm listening. Another example of this is if you want to convey recognition, you say, oh, or ah, or ah. Or if you want to show that you're thinking, you can say, hmm. A prolonged version of this would sound like, hmm. Now, that now means like you're suspicious or you're saying, hmm, something is fishy. And when you're confused, you say, hmm? Now, if these sound a little informal to you, you can instead use the following. You can say, yes, or I hear you, exactly, okay, got it, copy, wow. Can I talk to you about shipment? Yeah, sure, how may I help you today? So last month, I ordered a set of roller blades for my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be shipped directly to him, so I didn't enter my address. I entered his. Now, according to your website, shipping only takes seven days, right? Right. But see, a week has passed, and still no roller blades. The tracking number says delivered to mailbox, but I thought, hmm, there's no way that that would have fitted his mailbox. That thing's huge. Yes, it is. But still, I asked him to check the mailbox, because you know, you never know. Well... He did find something in the mailbox, but it was not the rollerblades. Oh. You know what he got? He got a note from USPS saying that he has a parcel and that he has to pick up the parcel himself. He has to go to the post office and pick it up himself. Like, yeah. how is that even possible? Is that normal? Oh, I see what you mean. Use these non-lexical sounds to your advantage when dealing with your customers. Or if a customer uses these sounds, it could signal an emotional state. And if you figure out what emotion that is, it could give you an insight on how to proceed. Now, pay attention to the pace and pitch of these two customers. You're sending me the replacement for the broken plates, right? Yes, we are. Also, for the inconvenience, we're giving you a $30 voucher. Oh, really? $30? Yes. Wow. Thank you. I'm so happy. You're sending me the replacement for the broken plates, right? Yes, we are. Also, for the inconvenience, we're giving you a $30 voucher. Oh, really? $30. Wow. Thank you. I am so happy. With the first customer, you can just sense that she's genuinely happy with the $30 voucher. Um, her pitch was high, her pace was fast, and you can just hear this smiling, happy voice. Oh, really? $30? Yes. Wow, thank you. I'm so happy. But with the second customer, do you really believe that she's happy about the $30 voucher? Listen again. Oh, really? $30? Wow, thank you. I am so happy. First, she changed her voice from normal to mocking. If you heard, she said, Oh, really? $30? Wow. Thank you. I am so happy. When before it was, You will send me the replacement of broken, 
it was just normal before, but when she heard their dollar discount, she immediately changed her voice. Her pitch was almost flat and her pace was intentionally slow. All of these are common indications that someone is being sarcastic. In this context, in this mock call, that she probably thought that $30 is a very small compensation for her inconvenience. So you see, active listening is not just listening and taking the verbal message at face value. No, it's also about understanding the undertone of the message, the nonverbal communication, the nonverbal cues. The good thing is, for the majority of humans, picking up on these nonverbal cues comes naturally. You know, we're humans built inside our brains are mirror neurons. These neurons enable us to understand what other people are feeling, enable us to put ourselves in other people's shoes and understand exactly what they're feeling. But if you want to get better at it, I recommend that you listen to audiobooks, specifically audiobooks for novels, because these audiobooks are usually filled with emotions and subtleties. You will hear the subtleties in the voice depending on the emotion that the narrator wants to convey. But just by knowing that nonverbal cues matter a lot when active listening, it will already help you improve your active listening. When a customer talks for a long time and you can barely remember what she said, this is so common for newbies, but over time, you're going to get used to it. If you are in this stage, I suggest that you keep a notepad open. While your customer is talking, you type in keywords that will help you remember what she just said. For example, she lost an item. You can write lost item, once replacement, before Monday. And then you just ask yourself, now that I understand what the customer wants, what is step one? What is step two? What is step three? Until you get to the resolution. And another part of active listening is responding. It doesn't matter if you understand the verbal cues or the nonverbal cues. If you don't respond appropriately, then it's all going to go to waste. Your customer is not going to know that you're actively listening. So how do you respond to show that you're actively listening? It really depends on the, your customer's issue and question. For example, you want to clarify something. You still need information. Then what you have to do here is to ask questions. You have to ask questions on parts that you don't understand. And hopefully, that question is a productive one. What I mean by a productive question is a question that hasn't been answered by the customer yet. That is why it is important that you take notes if you have problems retaining information because this will help you not ask the customer to repeat herself because then that would no longer be active listening. Or if your customer is just unloading her frustrations, her emotions, then you have to empathize. You can either apologize if it's your company's fault or acknowledge what she's going through. You can just say, this is frustrating for you, I understand. This is a great way to build rapport and to know that her pain is also your pain. Or if the customer is just making small talk, um, she doesn't really have a complicated problem or she's not really frustrated, she just, she's just making small talk, then active listening requires that you also acknowledge her small talk. The good thing is not all customers love to small talk. It's probably just going to be 5% every day. So it's not like something that you have to do every single time. And I understand it's hard because small talk for me is something that doesn't come naturally. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about that in a separate video. All right, that's all for today. And if you have any questions, comment down below. Bye.